Hey guys, welcome back to the Golang and React full stack gallery tracker application series. Uh, we have just two functions left and we're done with the front end. So the two functions are uh, change single entry and change ingredient for entry. Both update functions. So this one is sim a little simpler, which is the change single entry one. And what you do here is you say change entry dot change equal to false and you'll take the URL which is HTTP localhost 8000 slash entry slash update plus change entry dot ID and you will use the axios dot put method to make the update. So you'll say URL comma new entry and then you'll get the response. In the response you'll check if response dot status is 200. You want to set the refresh data to true. That means it will automatically refresh it for you. So as soon as this is set to true then our function here checks for refresh data if it's true then sets the refresh data to false and then it gets all the entries for us now as you can see we have just one squiggly line remaining and that is for the change the change uh, ingredient for entry so we'll call we'll create that function change ingredient for entry Firstly, we'll set the change equal to false back again. Then we'll use the URL for HTTP localhost 8000 slash ingredient slash update. So for all of for uh, the update and delete, just add a slash at the end. Okay. So for the uh, updating of the ingredient here, you'll say change ingredient dot ID. And then again, we'll call the axios dot put method on the URL. And here in this case, you're not passing the entire object. You're just passing the ingredient uh, data which is a new, new ingredient name. Once you do that, you'll get the response. For the response, you'll console log the status and you'll say response.status is 200. Set refresh theta to true. And this, it's a good practice to uh, console that long the response status everywhere in all of these places. I've just done it here because this is the function that I think things go wrong with uh, more often. This is just updating just one value, right? Things can happen there. Okay, so everything, everything looks good. We can try to see if there's any issue. We can do a quick check and then we will, uh, here it's model. And then we will try and run our program. Sorry, this model is already there. Okay. Then we'll try and run our program and we'll see what happens. Okay. One quick thing uh, is that at the end, we didn't add export entries. And this is why we were getting a small uh, issue here, the small line here. Now, now it feels okay. Now we can try running our program. I tried running the program and I can see some errors. Um, here I know uh, that in the single entry component, I have forgot to um, export default. So we'll say export default entry. So at least that's out of the way. Hopefully, yeah, so now we're getting an issue out here. And here the issue is I think that I'm not 
I'm using back ticks, but I sh as I should be using the single uh, inverted commas. Everything looks all right to me now. So I will stop this. And I don't know, somehow when you start the React server, it, it makes the font so small. I don't know why it does that. Um, now I'm still getting some issues. Okay, so Axios is not there. So what I'll do is I will stop this and I will, I, I know that you can't see the uh, font. So let me just close this and uh, get back a new terminal because somehow when you start React server, it just messes up the terminal font size. So in my folder, I will go ahead and install Axios. And this should hopefully fix it for us. So I'll say npm start. As soon as I do it, you can see that, you know, it's made my, uh, so like my browser so small, as in the terminal so small. And now you can see everything, all of that is here. You have new ingredients, change ingredient, cancel, and oh, why is it? This, this shouldn't be there. I mean, this this component shouldn't be there for changing ingredients. Only track calories, today's calories should be there. So we have to now fix that. Okay, so I have found the issue in the code. It's because the model where we were um, changing our ingredient, changing an ingredient, right, which is the one that is showing up in our browser, the one for change ingredients, right, this one, it's showing up by default because um, this model is getting ended right here, whereas it should actually end after the body has ended and only then the new model starts. So now everything is fine. So if I track today's calories, this whole pop-up shows up. I can create new calories and those entries will show up here. I'll have to start my Golang server. Uh, but everything will work perfectly fine. What I will do now for you is I will test this code. I will put it on GitHub and then you run it and everything will look perfectly just as it did in the uh, demo when we started off this project. And I will now take your leave. I have a long day ahead. I have to start my uh, office work. It's early in the morning. It's about, I think, six or seven right now. I'm not sure. All right. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Uh, in the next series. Sorry, this video, this series is over. <laughs> in the next series, I'll see you.